Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So we had several questions prior to the startup, and I'd like to cover a few of them and see if we can uh, uh, make some progress with that. So the first thing that came up, and I think it's really important, is I emphasize a lot about getting coherent as your first order of business to, to create that. And, and things that I suggest is, as hacks for creating energetic coherence throughout the system, throughout your body mind, is to point and reach with your index finger, feel your finger, reach with your elbows. And if you do that, as I've, I've kind of hinted, uh, is that if you're able to, to feel into that, in that moment, you are a, your awareness is expanded and you move into a calm, clear-minded state. And uh, it can be likened to that which spiritual masters talk about. That is, you're able to move to the gap between thoughts, find that, that calm state. And this is going to be important for what we're going to talk about uh, in a bit in this, in this lesson. But the, uh, so the getting there is super important and so important that a lot of spiritual practices make that as their, the goal of their whole, their whole practice is to, to get to that calm, centered, clear-minded state and be able to just stay there and to have that as a, a, a constant. And um, whereas as a martial artist, particularly with regard to Taiji Chuan, that is just the beginning. To be able to move into that state is just the beginning because that's where we move outside of the thinking mind, which dominates our lives. It's so much so that, you know, the uh, psychologists call that the, the default mode network as that part of the brain which is churning out thoughts night and day even while you're asleep it's it's cranking out it's using up the same amount of of resources while you're sleeping as it does while you're awake so it's it's going constantly and, and it's churning out uh this activity the ability to shift out of that even for a moment is a high level ability and it's one that people meditate for years to be able to accomplish. It is um, the, in, in Chinese philosophy, they talk about the, the mind monkey and the will horse. And the mind monkey is that looking everywhere, constantly trying to thinking, 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 and it is uh, evocative of the shin or the what they call the emotional mind or the heart mind. And then that is the, the counter to that is the is the will horse. And the and that is calm, it's directed, it's it's moving in a, in a particular direction. It is controlled. And that is corresponds to the E or what I refer to as the super conscious. We need both. We need both that thinking mind and the, the calm centered mind. And we, we experience that in a super conscious state. So being able to get into that, that calm, centered, relaxed, clear minded state. I consider it to be essential for the work that we're doing, that you can't really get to the goodies in Taiji Chuan unless you're able to go there intentionally, unless you're able to harness your mind monkey and your will horse and get them to play nice together. And we do that by accessing the feeling we access through 
the sensory neural network, primarily the feeling sense. The sensory neural network also includes all the other senses as well, your sight and your hearing and your taste, etc. But it, the feeling is the one that is global. That's one you feel all over your body. And so consequently, it is takes a different place in your brain. It allows you to shift into a different part of your brain whenever you're primarily concerned with the feeling state. So when I say feel your fingers, you do that and do that right now. Just point and reach with your index fingers. Take a deep breath. And notice that to the extent that you are feeling, your mind is clear. Now, if we feel the elbows, if we just reach out and feel the elbows at the same time as feeling the fingers, and notice that that amplifies that state, that calm, centered, relaxed state. That's the super consciousness. That's that will horse that we're, we're going for there. And the mind monkey takes a break. It doesn't is not destroyed, it not, not dis doesn't disappear, it just takes a little break. And to the extent that we can do that, and, and Scott brought up that, you know, I say, yeah, do that a couple hundred times a day and you'll be a Buddha. And that's a kind of a, a glib way of saying that you can get to a point where you're starting to identify more with your will horse than your mind monkey. And when that happens, things change. The, at that point though, as far as Taiji Tran is concerned, as far as the work that I'm doing is concerned, the game has just begun. That's step one, get coherent, get into a state of wholeness, state of unification, of oneness, and within your body mind, within this system that you occupy, and from that, once you have that established, then you can reach out, you can extend. And that's that yang impulse and it's an extension into the world. And then you can do cool stuff. So we don't wanna stop just at getting into a state of peace and serenity and even bliss. Those are all very nice, but you don't wanna get stuck there. You want to be able to move and function in the world in a way that is effective, that is interesting, that is playful, that is loving. And you want to not just get to that place of self-contained peace, but to be able to extend outward and, and play with all the other kids. So that's where we go from there. But we first want to be able to consciously and effectively and predictably get to that, that calm centered state. And we do that. And when we do that, we're engaging in what I talked about a few weeks ago. We're engaging in Wu Wei. That is the not do. We get to a state where we're just focusing on being. The focus is entirely just on the being, that, that stillness that a lot is a, a foundation for the doing, for motion. And um, so getting there many, many times a day is, I think, really, really important because it allows you to disidentify with your stuff, with your baggage, with your mental noise you can when you go into that state that all just disappears and you're just in now so uh before we go on any, any thoughts questions uh disagreements anything like that on on regarding that we're good scott you good good okay beautiful all right okay moving forward so once we have that uh being able to establish that is, 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 really, is really key because that is 
And that's really kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight was learning how to, to uh, access both yin and yang, but from that neutral pole. So Rick had a, uh, a, a question about how do we do two things at once, basically. That is, your reach. If you reach with the crown of your head, does why doesn't the whole body just pull up? How can you? Let's say if I'm if I'm standing, I feel the balls of my feet set my knees, and I sink and. The question I, I think is, how do I then reach with the crown of my head without pulling myself up? And we have to go to what I just talked about to be able to make this happen. That is, if you move into a super conscious state, that calm, relaxed state, and then you feel the floor and you just allow that to occur and you allow your, let's say your body from your waist down to just drop, get very soon, and then reach up with the crown of your head while you're sinking down. So there is a sense of being pulled apart. You're your spine is lengthening as you do that. And the same thing goes if I have my shoulder, I set my shoulder, but I reach out my hand. So I'm extending, opening up, my shoulder is staying put, it's not moving, but my hand is going out. So there's a separation that's, that's occurring there. It's creating a lengthening but there's moving it in two different directions. Same thing if I move both hands, if I move my right hand out, my left hand out, they are going in opposite directions. And it requires that I occupy the neutral place between them. So the, our ability to, to split requires the ability to disidentify with our stuff to be able to move the stuff around. Is that, uh, is that along the lines what you were talking about there, Rick? You're good? Okay. Um, uh, any further, did I cover that or any further thoughts on that? Scott, you have something. So it seems to me, it seems uh, I was when I was trying, I was doing that while you were doing it. Um, it seems like you can't really think about them both at once unless you're in that super conscious state, right? At least I'm, I'm not able to do that, that, it. That, that, that's my my feeling. Yeah, I, I can't seem to do it unless I am. Otherwise, right. my because if I start trying to think about both, it doesn't. Right. So you have hurt. to move out of out of your thinker bone. And, and move into a super conscious state in order to make that happen. Luckily, we have hacks that enable us to move into the will horse and be able to move into the E and, and shift, which then allows us to, to be able to do that. And um, did that cover what you wanted to cover there, Rick? Or is there more? I think you're un unmuted. Um, I'm going to have to just keep going with what I've been doing the last couple of weeks. This is more information which I'll be able to use in my exercises and and see how it develops. I mean, we've cool. been going on for however many weeks it's now been. So yeah, just keep moving upward. Let's keep yeah. going. Cool. Yeah. Good. So uh, well, I, I think what I'm going to talk about in a little bit, it may, may be apropos of that. But um, let me, um, uh, one more thing came up when I was talking with Jonathan earlier, 
and that is going back to JBS or what we jokingly called the jutting butt syndrome. And, uh, and the idea here is that, let's say I'm standing like this, right? I want my body to be centered. And one of the things I notice in a number of people is there is a tendency to lean one way or the other and to have more weight in one leg. If you habitually stand like, like this, then there is a tendency, even when you think you're in a neutral place, to kind of go with what you already are doing and have been doing maybe for decades since you were a jaded teenager just hanging out and being cool. You know, so the, uh, the be able to do that. So the, the way to, um, uh, so in the opening move, you know, I say, you know, spiral down to the left. You wanna feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and then spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right leg. So if you'll notice, my butt is not going out. If I begin, and even my butt just goes out even a little bit, it doesn't look like it's going out much, but it's out a little bit. And you know, if I, if you, you'll, you can see that, so if I have, have this stick here and I put it on my, on my butt and yeah, I just stick it out a little bit and, 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 and bring the stick straight down. Notice that it's, it's wide of my foot by about six inches. So if I am, my butt is in and I have my, my feet, so then I, I'm like this and, and it's right, it's vertical. It's harder to, uh, to see if you're looking from here, you have to kind of look over stick your head to the side and look down. And if you put your hand and point straight down. So everybody just stand up and, and try this. So this is really key because you cannot get to Sung Kwa if your butt is, is pushing out even a little bit. It just, that's because the, the, the way the joint is, is the hip, joint, hip bone is, is lined up there. If you push it out to the side and you try to, to even if you try to spiral down and turn, it's you're you're uprooted, you're disconnected. So you want to, you know, you can do this with a broomstick, you can do it with anything, but basic idea is you want to get it so that you can you can line up and get as vertical as possible there. So you can look down and see, okay, fairly close to where my foot is. And you want to do that. If the butt is sticking out, then you look down and say, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's pushing out a bit. So the other way of doing it is to just bring your arm down the side, have it come off of your hip point, and then look over. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta stick your head out to the side and look down and see if, you know, where you're pointing on the ground and how close you can get to that. So this is a uh, something that you're going to have to practice because it takes time to get that sensitivity to what it feels like to really be sung kwa. Because I think if you were to uh, let's say you're uh, you're like this and just bring your butt out just a little bit to the side, and then from with with that with that bend there. You want to try to spiral down and then turn and notice that you're running into resistance. You can't get very far that way. You bring that in and then you try it and like, oh, it's easier to turn, All right? So one of the hacks you can do with this, say at the, at the beginning movement here, is if you find that you, automatically kick your butt out to the right, then start by adjusting to the left, loading up the left, 
and then feel the ball of the right foot, spiral down to the left, and then turn to the right. And notice how fluid, how easy that is. Because then you can just sink right down, pick up the heel, and step out, you know, because you're rooted, you're connected. You don't have to do any work around. You don't have to kind of like that to, to be able to step out. You can, you spiral down. You're keeping your center inside the foot so that when you step out, you're not having to adjust your body. You're, you're, you're rooted and connected so that you can place your foot in all kinds of positions because this is solid, it's connected. And that only happens if you have your relationship to your leg, the relationship of your torso to your leg through the claw, if that lines up correctly. So that, so you want to get it so that your butt is in as much as you can, so that when you turn, you're, it's feeling very fluid. So any questions on this? Jonathan. Yeah, you know, it, it, of course, we've been doing this such a long time, and just today, I suppose it's occurring to me, there really is a challenge if you put a weight on a flexible stick it's going to go out, you know, as you press down. And in and insofar, I know we're not just pressing a weight on our right leg when we're doing this opening exercise. We're releasing the qua and going sung, but it's very much like, can feel like weight going into that right leg, which naturally, mechanically kind of would push it out. So it's like you have to consciously fight a very a, 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 almost a mechanical effect here of weight going down into that leg it seems that right leg you know what i'm saying right you would bend a stick if you put weight on it outward okay so you're okay. you're saying you're compressing the stick and and it's got to go one direction or the other right it's bending right and, and so okay. you have to fight and so I, I understand that it's like fighting against that sense that you're loading a weight onto your leg even though it can feel like that. You know what I mean? As you release the, the left qua, you're going sung, but it has to be different than, sung has to be different than loading a weight on your right, your right leg. Yes, absolutely. Richard, you had something? But that's tricky. I'm finding that tricky is what I'm saying. Cool. Um, yeah, I still, I still, uh, my butt starts to jut when I put my full weight on that leg. I can keep it straight until I weight it, and then I have to counterbalance the weight still. Uh, okay. So I can, I can keep my butt from jutting until I uh, load it, but then I still, you know, I still have counterbalancing because I'm not strong enough to hold in the center or I'm not balanced in the center properly. Um, okay. So that's when the, that's when the, jut comes it comes when i load it you know, okay, just like okay. it just like in the olden days but not as much <laughs> not as much well uh if you if you want to show me what you're doing you know I, i'd be happy to comment on it but otherwise i can give you a hack that okay. uh, that i find effective in learning how to do this and that is most people have trouble with this come from the fact that they're bending their knees too much. So when they do that, that, that uh, it creates tension in the legs, which then causes a grabbing in the hips. So unlock your knees, but don't bend them. Just unlock them. And then you're not putting such a demand on your, on your legs. And then build up from there. So that's the hack that I would recommend is if whatever you're doing. So let's say if I, you might uh, say a wider stance, right? If I spiral down and turn, right? If I keep my legs from getting too, too bent, let's say, so here's straight, here's unlocked, here's bent, right? So right. the deeper I go, the more strain that is in my legs. So then it's a weaker 
structure. Whereas if my legs are almost straight, but they're, the knees, knee joints are unlocked, I feel the ball, I set the knee and I spiral down, no problem. So because the spiraling down is happening here, it's not happening in the knee. And I think a, a lot of people have trouble with this in that they think that, that spiraling down means to go down to bend their knee too, which you can definitely work up to, but it um, gets in your way if you don't have this part first. That, that was already helpful. Um, and as I always know, I should start smaller and smaller. So thank you. I, I, okay. Thank you, I'll work on that. Yeah, so I think if you just do that, you'll, you'll start to get more confidence because so much of the qua is about confidence. If you're, if you're not confident, you're gonna tighten your ass and, and it's going to make it more difficult to, uh, to let go. Valerie. Well, I was very fortunate um, last week to be able to have a lesson with Rick in person. So don't be too <laughs> jealous, ha, ha, ha. Uh, and we went over this very thing. And the other thing that you had um, mentioned was feeling the weight in the inside of my foot, along the inside of my foot. And that made a tremendous amount of difference for me because you know, you're thinking of all these things and trying to feel all these things. And that was a piece that I know, but wasn't paying attention to. So that helped me a great deal. And I, I don't feel, um, I don't feel this is a fight. I don't feel this is a fight or a struggle. It is an opportunity to really grow in that, yes, I, my butt juts, juts out and nobody corrects me. Rick corrected me, which was, you know, a really, really fine moment uh, to be able to, you know, get that instruction for somebody who sees, you know, just this much of a movement, you know, just this much jutting out, but it's still jutting out. <clears throat> and we went through all of that, including, you know, what you said about not bending the knees as deeply, but the feeling the weight on the inside of my, my feet uh, really made a difference for me. Great, thank you, Valerie, that's great. Scott. Um, not that I recommend it to anybody, but if you got screwed up knees, this is really easy because if you don't do it right, it hurts. <laughs> when I do it right, it, I don't even notice my knees, but when I do it wrong, it hurts like hell. Right, yeah. right. Maybe whack so, yourself in the ankle in the knees before you start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so going back to what you were saying, Jonathan, you know, that it's the, you know, that there's a, a psychological thing that you're saying that, you know, as you're as you're going down, you know, there's a tendency to it wants to wants to go go wide because it is there's a feeling of compression there. So don't go down, you know, in terms of, of your relationship of your thigh to your, to your foot, but go down with relationship of your torso to your thigh. And that's, that's the, the challenge here is to be able to bring your awareness to the inguinal crease so that this thigh is not changing and it's not changing its its position. So all that's changing is your torso or the waist as we like to call it in Tai Chi, but the, the, the inguinal crease is, is what makes that, uh, uh, focusing on that is enables you to take it away from this idea, the psychological sense of being uh, compressing down. So now I have to tighten up. So, cause it's really, that's kind of productive. And uh, if you can, if you can get confident, you know, just go on one foot. You know, we did this. We've done this exercise a hundred times. That you feel the ball, you set the knee, and then you spiral down, and come back, and you spiral down the other way, and you come back, and you're just learning to really get acquainted with your qua so that you can move smoothly and be in sung qua the whole time. 
and it helps a lot if you don't go down real low to, to make that happen. High and shallow is much better to, to learn the basics and then from there, go deeper. Cool, uh, anybody else? Okay, these are all great questions, thank you. So did you hang up, Jonathan? Yeah, just one more thing. You used to talk about standing pigeon-toed sometimes as a counteractive. I mean, I think most of us probably wear out the outer heels of our shoe. Don't you think that's part of JBS? Yes, you know, uh, you're right. I think you're, so what, what Jonathan's talking about here is if, if you look at your shoes and you notice that the outsides of your heels and soles are wearing down more than the inside, that is indicative that you are standing with your weight on the outside of your foot. And so on your, when you're walking, you're kind of sliding along, you know, and putting your foot down and then sliding along and turning your foot out. So what Jonathan is saying, and I think this is helpful, is to, as a remedial thing, now just give us, open up your sacrum, elongate the, the muscles there in your butt a little bit, and just pivot on your heels and turn your foot in like that. And so that you're kind of knock kneed and pigeon toed. And everybody should just try that, just get that feeling and just feel the pull that's occurring as you're lengthening, particularly the piriformis muscle in your butt. You're opening up the ilia, um, the um, sacral, uh, da, 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 what's that? Iliosacral joint, iliosacral. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, so the uh, sacroiliac, that's it, not iliosacral, sacroiliac, sacroiliac joint. So it tends to get pinched up whenever we get, when we, when we have the foot, feet turned out like that, it tends to bunch up and it gives you a lot of problems with sciatic pain and lower back problems and knees and things like that. But if you just, just do that, and this, I find this very helpful if I'm on a long drive, my butt will start to scream at me like, hey, dude, you've been pushing us too long here. I get out of the car and I just drip like that and, and just stand like this for a minute. And it, ah, everything kind of relaxes and lets go. So that's, that's helpful. So thank you, Jonathan. That's good. So let's see. Um, let me talk a moment about um, yin yang and a third pole. So we have, um, you know, in the last few weeks, we've been talking about, like say with regard to Pong Jin, like the yang expression, which is the moving outward from the body. And lastly, we talked about the yin energy associated with that. And that is the, as the arm goes out and extends and is the yang expression, there is, the other arm is pulling back creating poles in opposition. So we have a yang and we have a yin. And we can go the other way, yang and yin. And the yang is enhanced by yin to the degree that I'm able to create that yin feeling, feel the yin, I'm able to, then my yang is going to be even greater. So it's, it's part of one system. The important part that's often unstated in all this is the third pole, which is a neutral pole. That is, it's neither yin nor yang. And that is occupied by you. So when we go into that calm, centered, super conscious state, we occupy the Wu Wei, 
the not do. And when we go to way wu way, which is doing based in non doing, we then are moving, we're expressing, there's motion that, but it's also without losing the wu way, without losing the not do. So we have these, we have, we're going from from the, uh, the insubstantiality of the not do to the substantiality of the do. And that creates an energy flow. So energy, the way I like to think about it is the energy is the relationship that we assign to the, the two objects, how two objects are relating to each other. How the non-stuff that that animates the stuff. And to the extent that I can hold two poles in opposition, I'm able to generate energy or chi. So, but to be able to do that, I have to be neither the yin nor the yang. I have to be this neutral pole, which is not a passive neutral pole, but a neutral pole of potentiality. This is kind of what they talk about when they talk about Wu Qi, which is non-manifestation, but infinite potentiality, infinite possibility. So if you consider that in that gap between thoughts, in that state, where you are plugged into something greater, you have the capacity to much more than you do in your own limited objectified self. And when you do that, you occupy that, that state, you know, that quiet, serene mind, you then are able to say, oh, I'm going to extend outward. Oh, and then I'm going to be able to pull inward. And, and so that I can create these things. So being able to direct those two and to feel those two, then we're able to use that, use mind, use our wisdom mind, our E, to generate chi and transform it and take it even higher, take it into the, the realm of spirit or Shen. So to be able to, to do that, but to be able to occupy your, at your center and then consciously shift from one to the other. And how do we do that? We feel, we consciously feel. So we're gonna do a little exercise to kind of play with this, this idea. And um, let's see how that goes, okay? Now let's start. Hmm. Well, as, as in all these things, well, the first thing we want to do is to get to that neutral place. We want to get outside of the mind monkey, move into the gap between thoughts, to feel the body, mind, spirit integration. So we feel the balls of the feet, actually step out, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and then turn to the right and step out with your left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and turn to the left, pivot on your right heel. Good, so let's take it from here. Feel the balls of both feet. Feel the floor. Feel the weight of your body mind, of your body pressing down on the floor. Notice where in your foot you want it to be on the, along the inside of your foot, along the big toe line. Knees are unlocked. 
So keep that, you keep sitting down, feel your body sinking. And at the same time, just reach up with the crown of your head without pulling up from your feet at all. So you're feeling the crown of your head in opposition to the sung of your lower body. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop, allow your coccyx to reach down. Do that and still reach up with the crown. And to do this, you will find that you need to move past your thinking mind. You have to move into a state of knowing that goes farther than thinking. Feel your elbows. Reach with your fingers. Bow down to the left. Bow down to the right. Get sun kwa. Reach with the clavicular notch. So you're lifting, opening the chest, opening the shoulders. Feel the chi in your hands. So this is the Wu Wei part. In Wu Wei, we're, we're focused on being. So this is the coherence, the stillness, state of being. The not do. Now feel the ball of your left foot. Feel where that touches the floor. And allow most of your attention to go to that while still maintaining your three pillars. Now feel the ball of your right foot. Let go of your left foot and feel the ball of your right foot. You'll still have some attention on your left foot, but you're bringing most of your awareness to your right foot, to the ball of your right foot. Now shift back to your left foot, feel the ball there. Now shift your ball to the ball of your right foot. So the emphasis here is not thinking about, but it's to feel. Feel the ball of your left foot. Feel the ball of your right foot. Now quickly go between left to right, to left to right. And notice that you are the neutral pole in the middle. You're the one directing your attention. You get to move your mind between your feet. You get to move your awareness between your feet. You get to move your energy between your feet. You're creating a alternating current as you're doing this. You're directing your energy. You're doing something with the energy. So we've moved beyond just the state of wholeness, a state of peace, and we're now into movement. We're into way, wu way. Now feel your left hand. Bring your awareness to that. You can even move it just to get that, get that feeling. And now feel the right hand and bring your awareness predominantly to the right hand. Now bring it to the left hand. Now bring it to the right hand. Left hand. Right hand. Left hand. Right hand. So you're shifting back and forth between those two. 
that shifting is creating energy flow. It's also creating hemispheric synchronization in your brain. You're rewiring your nervous system as you do that. But it's also acquainting you with you, the neutral terminal, the neutral pole in this process. You're not the left hand, you're not the right hand. You're not the action. You're the one that is directing it. Feel your left elbow. Feel your right elbow. Feel your left elbow. Feel your right elbow. Feel your left, right, left, right. Now allow that to continue without thinking. Just feel your mind taking over at the superconscious level and accelerating that back and forth. This is what I think is meant by vibrating the chi. Any vibration is, can be seen as some piece of stuff that is moving in contrast to some non-stuff, some substantiality that's, that's interacting with an insubstantiality. If you think of a guitar string, it's vibrating back and forth. You got the stuff of the guitar string. What's it vibrating in? It's vibrating it in the space and the air that surrounds it, which is much more insubstantial. And that's what we're doing. We're vibrating the chi. We're drumming the chi. We're drumming substantiality and insubstantiality. We're vibrating it. Now, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, loading up the right leg, and then step in with the left foot. Return to center. Take a deep breath. Dissolve, dissolve the thoughts, the chi, the body, everything, just let it go. Returning to that stillness, returning to the Wu Ji, to the Wu Wei, to the not do, state of being. Cool, grab a seat. Sharon. Um, I just an observation for myself is um I really caught it when we were um focusing on the elbows. And when we were doing it at a slow pace, I'm feeling everything. But when we picked up the pace, my eyes wanted to be involved. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, I think uh, that has to do with the eyes are very, very tied in with the thinking mind. So it's, it's, it's the mind trying to hold on to control over the operation. And so as we're accelerating, we have to let that go and just trust the knowing that is that is supersedes the thinking. So that's that from my perspective. That's that's how I how I I, I did it. It's like, you know, get like 
because I know exactly what you're talking about. Because you know the the eyes are, are they want to they want to follow along and and to narrow things down. And as we're accelerating, we're saying, oh no, I have to let that all go. I have to, you know, just trust that that Rick's not taking me someplace too dangerous here, and uh, that <laughs> that that we we will get through this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Rick. And that started happening for me. And I said, hey, hey, stop it. There's nothing to see here. Let the shen shine in. Let the shen shine in. Move along. <laughs> yep. Nothing, nothing, to, nothing see to see here. here. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Scott. Uh, two things. First, I noticed that um, so my weight is on my big toe and my, you know, the ball of my foot all the way back. But then when it gets to the heel, it's on the outside. Okay. So is that, so, so I just stand pigeon toe for a while and try and. It, it's a gradual <laughs> process of, of retraining the body. It's been doing what it wants to do for decades. And now you're saying, Hey guys, I got this new idea. And, and. There, you're, you're going to meet with some resistance, you know, from your constituency. They're they're going to say, "Hey, you know, we we kind of like the way we've been doing it, you know, even though it causes me pain a lot of the time. It's still the way the, the familiar. It's the devil I know. So it's slowing everything way down, and 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 engaging in a conversation with with your body and say, okay, foot." What's what's sensible about that? How, how's that working for you, foot? And uh, you know, take it from you know, and you engage that in that conversation and and make your adjustments accordingly. And Jonathan, yeah. oh so, God, you finished. Yeah, there was another thing. Um, um, when we were doing that, when we were doing the whole exercise. There was that there was a you know maybe you couldn't even see it if you were looking at me but there was definitely from the very beginning I could feel a, sh a shift you know when I felt the right my weight would be you know shift more to the right to the left you know when we were doing the hands right. I, I had to keep myself from you know doing like Karate Kid and spinning back and forth. <laughs> 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 so, is that, so I mean, is so I mean, it's definitely a small physical component, or is that just? A... I would say, to the degree that you can calmly center and allow that, you know, be able to shift without movement, it will enhance the exercise. You know, I think it's it, and it, it, you're able to generate. If you're able to hold position in space, you're able to generate more power than if you are become part of the movement. You know, if you if your body goes with the movement, then you're you're uh, truncating the uh, the effective power produced. It's that separation, keeping one one thing still and the other thing moving, that allows you to to create more. Well, if, if I generated any more, more energy, I probably would have been levitating, so. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> Jonathan. It's an ex thank you. A, an exciting yet another new party trick from you here. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems that the acceleration was really cool between the left and the right hand. And what happens for me I, is that it's no longer the, the distinguishing between the two. One's obviously left, one's obviously right. But they're happening so quickly and exchanging so quickly that there is a balance that almost indirectly is defining a center more strongly by the fact nice. of that going back and forth, which is cool nice. because there's a lot in the center, the pineal gland. There's a lot of cool stuff in the center, but it's like, I don't know, it's just another way to access the center, it seems. Beautiful, beautiful. That's great. Stan. Okay. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, do we keep on practicing this or do we go to a certain place and be satisfied that? And the other thing is, uh, eventually, are we going to incorporate this in the practice, uh, in the form or whatever we're doing, uh, where 
basically we're bouncing from one to the other at a high rate of speed. Let's uh, talk about this more next time. Okay. Where, where, where we go from here, because this is, this is baby steps. Ah, uh, yes. Where we're going. Yes, okay? baby but steps. It, uh, <laughs> but, but it's, uh, it, it, it's the foundation. So in answer to the first part of your question, yes, practice that. Mm -hmm. just, you can do it just 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 put your hands in your lap and just feel your left hand feel your right hand feel your left hand feel your right hand you know back and forth you feel your foot just bounce back and forth just training your brain to recognize the neural information the um, sensory neural network that information coming in and by doing that you will begin to awaken from the sleep of the monkey mind, the <laughs> trance of objectification, just by doing that, because you are learning to control your brain. You're learning to control, you create that whole brain coherence, which creates all kinds of cool, fun stuff. Yeah, Jonathan. And that's right, the Buddha didn't say he was enlightened, but he did say he was awake. He was awake. That's right. Oh my. That's right. So what we want to do is wake up and and do that as do that often. As often as you can. God bless you, Rick Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> and your Great. lovely wife. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Love Merry you Christmas all. Christmas Love you. Bye bye. Love you. Maria. Bye, Happy Yule.